Here I'm going to walk you through how you can compare short-term data and how you can do it in a really compelling way. We're going to compare monthly information over a set time period. So we're going to compare one month versus the previous month versus the month before, but we're going to do it cumulatively. So I'm going to show you the steps that you need to implement to actually do this. And you could replicate this over any time frame, but I'm just going to show you how to do it on a short-term time frame using uh, a range of different DAX formula. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to start with a, a core measure or a core metric. In this case, we're going to start with something really simple like total sales. And all that is is sum of the total revenue column. So really simple stuff. Your core measure could be a range of different things. In this case, I'm just using total sales because it's uh, as simple as can be. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is we actually want to have a look at historical information. So let's 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 go find a particular month. Just uh, let's just set this up. Let's set up a table first, uh, where where we can actually see the see the data, and then I'm going to actually drag in my month and calendar column here, which is actually sort of month and year. I'm going to turn this into a slicer. So what we're going to be able to do at the end is, is select any of these months. And we'll be able to analyze, okay, how do we go this month cumulatively? But then overlaid on that, we're going to go, well, how do we actually um, how do we actually perform the last month cumulatively and the month before that? So first thing we're going to do, though, is we've actually got to generate the calculation, which enables us to compare one month to another. Now, the way we do that is we use a time intelligence function called date add, which is my favorite time intelligence function because it's just so versatile, so flexible. But... I'll show you how to, let's have, let's have a look how to use it now. So total sales and just go last month, we'll just go LM. And I'm going to type calculate. Now calculate changes the context of the calculation. And then I'm going to go date add here. And then all I've got to do is I've got to put in my dates column for my date table, which is absolutely key. And then I'm just going to jump back here, minus, minus one. And you'll see here you've got all these options you can select from day, month, quarter, and year. So in this case, I'm just going to jump back one month. And then I'm going to close it off. So what we're doing here is we're calculating total sales, but instead of calculating it in the current context, we're going to change the context by one month. So I'm going to push enter, and then I can push that into uh, our table here, and you'll see that this 108 actually was the very first number from the month before. Now, if we actually then drill into a particular month here, you'll see like, uh, let's look at December 2015, you'll see here that that's the only information we're going to get. And we're now, we're now comparing total sales this month versus total sales last month. But we can very easily go two months ago. So I'm going to go total sales two months ago. It's going to copy and paste and put two months ago. And then all I've got to do here, so easy, change that to two. And then I drag that into my table. And now we're comparing two months, which is great. So we've got this month, last month, and the month before that. And this is dynamic, right? So every month we go to, it's a dynamic calculation. Now, we need to look at this cumulatively because if we look at it from a clustered column chart perspective, that's busy, right? Way too busy. Can we really generate uh, or see any trends in that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, don't, I don't feel that we can, or we can certainly do it a better way. And that's cumulatively. So now we're going to work out uh, how, how we can actually do this for cumulative, for cumulative totals. Now, we need to use the cumulative total pattern here. So this is actually uh, what that is. So I'm just going to go cumulative sales. I'm going to go calculate. And then I'm going to go total sales. Then filter. All selected. And then I put, actually, this is the entire dates table, not just the dates column. It's going to be the entire dates table because we want it to be we want it to actually pick up a month in calendar as well. And that's at the date table. And then I'm going to go dates is less than or equal to max date. So this is in itself a great tech, uh, a great technique to use in Power BI. The cumulative total enables you to do fantastic visualizations. But we're going one step further than that to that. And if I now drag this into my table, we'll start to see, well, here we actually have our cumulative total, which is fantastic. So we uh, we don't have you know, here we've got every day and here you can see well it starts off at 189 but then it jumps up to 427 which is these two um, um, added together and so on and so forth 
Now check out how straightforward it is to move from here to now compare monthly information. So this 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 column of information cumulatively and this column cumulatively. All I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this pattern. Once I've embedded that down, I'm going to copy and paste into a new measure and go last month there. And then all I've got to do is find my other measures, just sub in my other measures. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to uh, go cumulative sales two months ago. And then I'm going to find my other measure for two months ago. And then check this out. I'm now going to drag in my two months ago measure. I'm going to drag in my last month measure. And now we're now hopefully you can see well, we can get a visualization out of this. I'm actually going to get rid of those intermediary calcs. And then I'm going to turn this into an, uh, what do we got here? An area chart. And now you can see, wow, we've got this cumulative total um, analysis or trend analysis uh, across all um, across all these months. So this month versus the month before and the, and the month before that. And when it's dynamic, right? We can jump between any of these. We can go to any month and see, well, what was the trailing? What was the trailing trend? And are we outperforming the previous months, et cetera, et cetera? So a pretty cool technique, right? And doesn't take too long to set up. You've got to start at your core measure, and then um, then use a, use some time intelligence patterns, and then jump to the cumulative total pattern, and then all of a sudden you've got this uh, fantastic analysis. And then you don't stop there because what you what what this this is all connected up to your data model. So you could then bring in uh, some different dimensions, for instance, say a city, and we could then click into city, and you'll see well from a city perspective how how are we performing from one month to the next. And there's not as much information uh, for some of these cities. Obviously, there isn't sales happening all the time, so it's probably not as relevant a, um, you know, a, a, a an insight. But um, I'm sure that you'll find one in your own um, in your own analysis or in your own environments for sure.